Okay, so let's uh, start with uh, this question. Uh, we have uh, four questions that are kind of in the same group. They all, you know, you could have gotten as your question one. So I think they're going to be somewhat related to each other. So we'll just do them all together. Um, this is the first of the four question set. It says, consider two positive charges. Let me just start doodling so that I kind of have some idea of some uh, symmetrical. Okay, x axis. Okay, we're dealing with some kind of axis. Here's x equal to zero. And at two points, let me call that x naught and minus x naught, we are placing two charges, uh, q1 and q2. Um, same magnitude, we are given that, um, and we are given the distance. Consider a third positive charge of some magnitude and some mass moving along the y-axis. Okay. Uh, where applicable, let potential be zero and the charge, yeah, that's the standard uni, uh, universal reference point. So um, let's say, okay, the Q3, at some point it's at this point, let me call that Y naught, and we are given the value of 4.6 centimeters, and it asks, what is the potential energy of Q3 at that point? So you start out with the formulas for potential energy, um, or rather a, pot a formula for voltage. And the connection between voltage and the potential energy is that potential energy is the amount of charge, test charge times voltage. So the voltage, uh, you have a pretty simple formula for voltage of a point charge. Voltage of a point charge is given by Coulomb's constant times the amount of point charge like Q1 and Q2 there. So let me call that Q divided by the distance R. And uh, one remarkable thing about voltage is that this whole quantity is a scalar. So you don't have to worry about direction. It doesn't have a direction. Um, so we can just uh, plug in numbers um, and get that. Now, the one kind of a hurdle to go over is that in this setup, you don't have a single charge. You have two point charges and you might despair, oh, I have formula for a single point charge. I don't have formula for two point charges. And what I do tell you is that the, um, the electric potential obeys what's called the superposition principle that you might have heard mentioned in physics 4A, uh, especially in the context of waves. And it's a principle that applies to much broader categories of things than waves. It applies uh, whenever linearity is held. Your uh, math class might have covered the idea of linearity uh, before. It's the same mathematical concept of linearity, whenever linearity holds. So uh, what this superposition principle lets me do is I can calculate what the voltage would have been due to this charge here, you know, voltage of V1 based on this distance R1. I can calculate voltage V2 based on this distance R2. And because these are scalars, I can simply add them. The, the total voltage is a simply an algebraic sum of V1 plus V2. You don't have to worry about directions. You don't have to worry about pairwise cancellation. You can simply add them. So even though, you know, question made the things nice for us by putting them symmetrically, they didn't have to be symmetric. It still would have been with the about same amount of time we would have gotten this same answer. So uh, let me uh, just uh, write this out. So I have to rewrite this expression R as um, square root of x1 squared plus uh, y1 squared, where x1 would be this and y1 would be this. You know, Pythagorean theorem that gives you the distance. So uh, I think I have everything to type it in. Uh, let me actually do this on Wolfram Alpha so that I don't have to look up the, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the Coulomb constant. So I would have just be entering this expression basically twice, um, say Coulomb constant times the amount of charge, that's 8.5 micro Coulomb um, divided by the distance R. I'm gonna type in the expression, square root of um, X position squared, so 2.4 centimeter squared plus the uh, position uh, y position of the charge uh, 4.6 centimeter squared um, I squared it that's that so I did it for one of the charges I need to do it for the other one so I can do plus and the other one had actually the exact same parameters 
their uh, amount of charge is the same. And even though their X position is different, you know, it's a minus 2.4 centimeter because I'm going to be squaring it. It actually doesn't make any difference. So that's the second thing. Or I could have taken the first one and multiplied it by 2. So we did that. Let's see what we get. That seems like a reasonable interpretation. So we get amount of energy. Wait. Potential energy. Oh, oh, I see. I, I, I'm going to be getting voltage. And I need to multiply to Q3 to get the energy. So let me actually do that uh, multiplication. So I'm going to take this whole thing and multiply by um, 5 microcoulomb. Oh, that might not be all that big of a value. So all of that times 5 microcoulomb, 14.7 joule. At uh, that position, how fast is it moving when it reaches? Oh, it's going to go farther away. So let's uh, first uh, calculate the new energy. I think I can do that most easily by changing a few numbers. 4.6 centimeter. I'm going to turn that into 9.2 here. And there was one more spot where they came in. Like you could also factor this, uh, make your uh, plug-in exercise a little bit easier. But let me just do it this way because I don't think it's going to take all that much time anyway. So um, I, I do think this intermediate step is helpful because this intermediate step allows me to write down the energy difference. I can say, okay, I got those and my energy difference between when the charge was here and moved farther away is going to be 14.7 uh, minus, where's the number, 8 joule or 6.7 joule. And I can answer the rest of the question based on that because it's asking how fast is it moving in the sense of, oh, if I uh, somehow related this to kinetic energy, uh, which is given by one half mv squared, then I can look at this, the difference in energy went into kinetic energy, I can solve for v. And when I solve for v, it becomes v is equal, I'm just going to do it in my head. Square root of um, 2 times the change in energy divided by m square root it. So are we given m? Uh, let's see. We are given m. Ah, mass 2 grams. Okay, so I think I can put in. Uh, let me just put in the numerical value because it's going to be so much simpler than this whole uh, algebraic expression. So it'll be. Yeah, yeah I wrote the energy 6.7 joule. So it will be 2 times. 6.7 joule divided by mass of 2 grams. And, you know, th I know this is not basic SI units, but um, Wolfram Alpha will convert it for me anyway. So square root of that quantity. Okay. Then, yeah, I get something speed, 81.9 meters per second. 81.9. So this, uh, um, again, uses a superposition principle to answer it. And once you kind of get the concept of what superposition principle does for you, then it's a pretty simple question. Uh, you you do, uh, you know, around this point in the semester, having memorized some of the formulas, it does help you. It, it helps you, you know, save time by not having to go to your textbook to look a formula every single time. Um, so it does help you. And uh, what I would say is that uh, the kind of the memorization, memorization that might happen, it should happen organically. That as you uh, work on homework questions, that maybe you, maybe you use it so much, so often enough that you have naturally memorized it. Um, and so I don't know how much effort I would have put in specifically to memorize formulas um, uh, if it's not happening automatically. Uh, so let me look at the next question, 1-3. So it says an evacuated tube excel uses an accelerator voltage to accelerate electrons to hit a copper plate and produce x-rays. Oh, so it's going to be uh, something that looks like this. Um, so if you have um, some two electrodes, this is your cathode, and you got some electrons that's being accelerated this way, which means there must be an electric field that's actually being set up the opposite way. You must have these electric fields. Um, and it's asking what would be the maximum speed of these electrons uh, before hitting uh, we max before hitting the copper plate. So as you hear that, uh, read the description, I hope you get the sense that um, this feels like a scenario where energy is conserved. 
So you have, um, so you can set it up so that the electron starts from here, potential energy or the high potential energy, you know, absolute value of elementary charge times the 31 kilovolt. That's the potential energy at this point. And when it reaches here, if I, so I guess by setting potential energy this way here, I've kind of implied that potential energy here would be zero. Um, so something like a zero volt here and uh, 31 kilovolt to here. Um, so with that, um, at this point, you should have kinetic energy that's equal to the initial potential energy you started out with. And once you have that, then you can solve that for one half or, you know, uh, that is equal to one half mv squared. Solve that for v. That will give you the maximum speed of the electrons. So let me just, uh, uh, you know, I could just solve for v out of this expression, but let me just go slow. Uh, actually, figure out the kinetic energy of this electron. So it's gonna be um, electron charge times 31 uh, kilovolt. That gets me um, five times 10 to the minus 15 joules. I have no sense if uh, that's a small number or big number. So let me do it this way. I'm going to say, okay, that is going to be my energy term. So I'm just going to take this expression here and solve it for V. Uh, uh, let me just do it in my head for in the interest of time. And when I have done it in my head, this is what it'll look like. Solving this for V. So V is going to be square root of 2 times kinetic energy divided by m squared. So I can actually make use of what I calculated here. I can take this to be kinetic energy, two times that, and then divide by m. Um, oh, I can say electron mass, because I know they are electrons. So I need to square root the whole thing. Let's see what it does. Maximum speed of the electrons is, and the whole one half mv squared, that is the non-relativistic thing. Uh, we're not doing relativistic mechanics yet. Uh, so with all that, okay, um, what? Oh, it might have uh, interpreted the electron charge as being negative. Let me call it uh, elementary charge so that it doesn't think the charge is negative in nature. Uh, okay, okay, so I get 1.04 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, 1.04. I guess that is uh, possible. Uh, that's uh, slower than speed of light, about 33% of speed of light. So, uh, and you know, in particle accelerators, these particles actually go really fast. Um, at SLAC, Stanford Linear Accelerator Collider, or I think AC stands for accelerator. It, um, they can uh, accelerate electrons to really close to speed of light, like 99.999 something uh, of the speed of light. So this 33% of speed of light, that is actually fairly non-relativistic, uh, which uh, I don't know how much that actually matters in this class. Okay, let's look at the next question, 1-4, I think. Um, it says a uh, singly charged gas ions are accelerated from rest through a voltage of 19 volt. It, that, this sounds like a similar setup as the, the other one. Um, so I have some charges, which uh, who, has some mass and some charge, <laughs> and it's going to start from rest and get accelerated through until it reaches uh, um, some other electrode that's going to be at 19 volts. Okay, what is the kinetic energy of the gas ion after being accelerated? Okay, so there are some uh, kind of underlying assumptions used to state explicitly and understand where that comes from. When the charge is starting from here, I'm going to say its kinetic energy is basically zero. It's a starting from rest. It does say accelerated from rest. So whatever kinetic energy it had there, it's negligible. Um, and it has some potential energy at this point. The potential energy that it has at this point, uh, how do I want to put it? Um, let me say this is at 0 volt and this is at 19 volts. So that electron would, or actually I don't know if it's electron or not, does it? Singly charged gas ion. Oh, uh, that's like uh, I think a sodium uh, plus. So it would be positively charged. 
If it's a positively charged, I actually want things oriented the other way. I want it oriented so that it's at 19 volts here and 0 volt here. And uh, the positive ion is going to be pushed away from the high voltage into lower voltage. So when it asks, um, so uh, its potential energy at this point is going to be the amount of charge in the singly charged ion times this uh, amount of voltage here from 0 to 19 volts, 19 volts. So this is my snapshot one. This is where the charge is starting from. And I look at where it will be in snapshot two. In snapshot two, your potential energy will basically be zero because you are at zero volts, close enough. So zero. And your kinetic energy won't be zero anymore. Your kinetic energy will be uh, the non-relativistic thing. Uh, one half mv squared. Um, Oh, wait, um, I, I don't have to, I don't need this. I can just look for kinetic energy. So I don't know the mass of the ion, but I can just stick with the kinetic energy. And uh, so from here, once you've recognized that, oh, this is going to conserve energy, then you, you use conservation of energy. You say total energy at point snapshot one is equal to the total energy in snapshot two. So you say, okay, zero kinetic energy plus Q times 19 volts is equal to... Um, um, I guess zero plus just kinetic energy. So your kinetic energy will be, uh, now they are not giving us the charge directly, but they are telling us a singly charged, like, you know, sodium plus. And what it means it lost to one electron. So how much a, a additional net charge it has, it can be explained by lack of an electron. So I would say the amount of charge here is the same as the elementary charge. And um, yeah, so kinetic energy should be elementary charge times 19 volts. Let's calculate that. So elementary charge times 19 volts. And it should just give me the amount of kinetic energy. Uh, yeah, 8.04 times 10 to the minus 18. That seems small, but um, that's probably right because I see this recommendation for using scientific notation. There's probably a reason that's there. <laughs> okay, what, at what temperature is the uh, thermal kinetic energy of gas molecule equal to kinetic energy of the gas molecule? Um, so thermal kinetic energy of gas molecule, if you remember from the thermodynamics, sorry, I promised you that you wouldn't have to deal with the thermodynamics, but there will be occasionally questions like this. Thermal kinetic energy, you could just look up the formula. It's uh, 3 halves uh, kBT per particle uh, if it only has translation of kinetic energy, um, which um, uh, it doesn't tell me if uh, you're... Yeah, uh, um, so let me do it this way. So I think uh, what the equation I need to set up is say that this is equal to that kinetic energy. Uh, this is equal to that kinetic energy up there. So it's asking for at what temperature. So I'll solve for temperature. Doing that, I get temperature is two thirds, uh, not KB quite yet, kinetic energy divided by Boltzmann constant. So let's do that and see where we get. This is the energy I'm dealing with, times two divided by three times the Boltzmann constant. So at thermal kinetic energy gas molecule is equal to kinetic energy gas ion above at um, at uh, 147 Kelvin. That sounds right. <laughs> that is pretty high. Um, 147,000. That's uh, hotter than the surface of the sun. I do think a core of the sun is uh, uh, hotter than this, like a million Kelvin. Um, <laughs> but that is pretty high. Um, yeah, and 19 volts is a tiny amount of voltage. It's not, you know, it's two 9 volt batteries in series. That will get you 19 volts. It's uh, um, You don't need a high voltage supply for that. Okay, I think I have one more question, 1-5. One um, let's look at the question. If the potential due to a point charge is that at a distance of that, what is the magnitude of the charge? Oh, you had an exercise like this in your lab. <laughs> um, and uh, so, you know, you think about the scenario. You set up, set it up. So you have, okay, I have a point charge, Q. 
and uh, I'm looking at a potential at some distance away. Um, so they say 11 meters. I'm looking at potential at any of these points on a circle. It can be any of these points on a circle. So what is the potential here? Oh, and they're actually giving us the potential, 545 volts. So what are they asking for again? Uh, they are asking for the magnitude of the charge. So it'll probably be a positive charge uh, for your potential to be positive and not negative. And um, as you think about it, I hope in a little bit of time you come across this expression that voltage due to a point charge is given by the Coulomb constant times the amount of the point charge divided by the distance. This is a formula that uh, either in your textbook or in lecture we derived by uh, integrating over a, 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 through a, a path integral coming in from infinity to a, a finite distance. So as once you have this equation, you realize, okay, I have one equation. I know voltage somehow at the given distance r. Okay, I know that, I know that. What I don't know is q. Let's solve for q. Solving for q, you get q is the distance r times v divided by Coulomb constant. Yeah, so that should be the charge. Now, um, as you derive these formulas, just to make sure you... Um, kind of have in your head um, the kind of separation between the special purpose of formulas, which would be something like this, you know. I would not use this to just find the charge in any other context. I'd have to verify it for a point charge and all that stuff. Um, so special f purpose formulas like this, and formulas that are more generally applicable, even though this kind of borders onto special purpose formulas, but if you memorize this, you know, whenever you see point charge, you can use it, then um, it's not that far. So, okay, the distance, 11 meters, times the voltage, 545 volts, divided by, uh, not Boltzmann constant, but Coulomb constant. Uh, whenever you see K, just be careful. Make sure you know, is it Coulomb or Boltzmann? It, it depends on context. It's uh, um, worth kind of double-checking that and making sure you don't uh, make any mistakes. So, Coulomb. Yeah, the ampere times the second, that's going to be Coulomb. Okay, I have Coulomb there. Okay, times 10 to the minus 7. All right, I can just uh, enter. I keep forgetting that um, word for this coefficient part. There's a word for the leading part of the scientific notation. I keep, I can't remember it now. Let me just type it in. 6.670. Oh, um, uh, uh, yeah, there's a word for the leading part of scientific notation that I can't remember. Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, that's the, those four questions that could be in your question one.